this video is gonna be on this thing. Spoiler alert, it did not go the way I thought it was gonna go. Behold, I inherited this tractor thanks to a friend of the family who unfortunately passed away named Leonard. So thus the tractor is now named Leonard. Went to fire it up and I got this. Okay, not that, hang on. Huh, my first thought was a wiring issue because Leonard, the man, not the tractor, was notorious for pulling all of the safety stuff off of the tractors and just wiring random things together. I went through all of the wiring and that really got me nowhere. I jumped from the battery negative to the mounting bracket of the starter and from the positive right here to the positive lug on the starter. Same issues, I thought maybe a bad starter, which coincidentally enough, it was a bad starter. The magnet broke, put another starter on it, nope. Then if you roll this over by hand, I thought maybe something's bent, which, you know, you hear that noise? By the way, that's the vent tube here. I have compression and all that. Just listen, listen real close right here. You hear that? Not that. Not that. Not that. That. I was like, what the heck is that noise? Let me grab this. Uh-huh. Head gasket. Oh my god. I don't know if that's the only issue. And I only stumbled across this because of dumb luck. It got a little bit a little bit wet, and I just happened to be looking right in here once I heard that noise. If that's the only issue, that's a really cheap fix, but I won't know until I take the head off of it. Oh, that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. You can get out of here. All right. Is that normal? Oh. Is that supposed to do that? Let's remove the intake. I'll just leave all the linkage together. Let me pull the valve cover off just to see, because I want to pull the push rods out. Just take a look, see if that tells us anything. Oh no, uh oh. Well that is a big issue there, ah oh, boy. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. That explains quite a bit. I would say that it may be hydro locked. There's your set screw. That got well the guide, is it broken? Is the guide broken? Yep, it's broke. One thing I do know about these engines is this push rod here is aluminum and this one's steel. That's interesting. <laughs> Is this one bent too? Oh, it is bent. It definitely hydro locked. When you have a head gasket leak or something like that, what ends up happening is you get liquid in the cylinder. You can't compress that. Now we'll pull the head off to take a look. It's the moment of truth. A little bit of scuff on the cylinder here. And just like deposits right there. The piston looks good. I mean, it spins nicely. Right here, it looks bad. It looks like it got exhaust gas for escaping right through here, which makes sense because you can see here, here, and here, this whole area, there's exhaust gases escaping. That's what these marks would be. We're gonna clean up our mating surfaces. Mating surfaces are just any of those surfaces that mate with each other. You know, bring your cylinder all the way to the top so you don't get stuck down in it. We'll just act like that didn't happen. I've heard people who really highly suggest never cleaning off the top of your pistons. But I'm just curious if anybody else has heard that argument before. Don't forget around these locating dowels. Well, the mail came. Got this from one of my subscribers. <laughs> well, he's also my brother-in-law, so. This will go on only one way, so you'll know for sure if you got it on the right way or not. Just 
just like that. When you do head bolts, there is a sequence and a torque spec for all this stuff, so don't just, you know, go tightening crazily. I'm just going to snug it down, and that's all I'm gonna do for now. All right, now we need to pull this plate out. I just, the whole stud just, oh, it's all, it's all one. Okay, I thought that was just a nut. I guess not. Perfect, torqued to perfection. Push rods. You could probably get some assembly lube or something like that for like $10, or you could just use some old oil, which is all I'm doing for this. Hit the ends of these. Put these back in. Don't forget these. These are little caps here. They go right on there. As far as the valve adjustments go, I don't know just yet. I'm just gonna spin this on one or two threads. So I only found that these are about 20-ish foot-pounds or 220 inch-pounds, which equates to about 18, and do a final round. So I typically will do these in like two rounds or so. Make sure I didn't miss anything, because that would be not good. Oh no! You've got to be kidding me. That went down into the, the muffler. Of course it's the 10 millimeter that does it too. Well. 10 millimeter had a good life. So there. Undo your torque wrench. Don't leave pressure on it. Clearances that I found were three to five thousandths, or 003 to 005. The exhaust is five to seven thousandths, so it's a little bit looser. So I'm gonna just slip these in here. You know, somewhere around in there. We're leaving that in place, of course. Just got some super cheap RTV. I'm just gonna smoosh it right on here. Because if you miss the bolt hole, you'll hear about it. Get a nice even surface, good coverage. Give it a couple minutes to semi cure or semi skin over. And that way, when you do put the pieces together, it doesn't just smush out the sides. It's there to take up some of that space and the inconsistencies and create a good mating surface. And if you smush it all out the side, you're creating a really paper thin, quote, gasket. And then I'll come back in a handful more minutes to uh, really give it the beans and tighten it down. While we're waiting for that, we'll go ahead and just put the other stuff on. And you can see, I think maybe, it's not squishing out as much. All right, let's give it a spin. Okay, the moment of truth. Either good things or bad things are gonna happen. <laughs> oh, no, I'm getting fuel. Well, I pulled the valve cover back off. Watch this right here as I spin this over by hand. As soon as I come around this way, the rocker moves right here. You know, the push rod moves. But watch this. Notice anything? It didn't move at all. Not one bit. Well, that's good. Kind of sucks, obviously. Um, I don't know if I'm going to end up tearing this motor down to even put a cam in it. It's even worth my time to do it. 
Um, it'd be fun to maybe just make a video out of. Who knows what I'll find inside of it? Maybe it's not a cam. That's just my guess right now. So I got other projects to do. I got to update you on, well, this. Let me get a better view here. And it looks sort of like a car. And I have another project that I'm going to unveil here soon enough. If you have any guesses of what it is, put it in the comments. If you're one of the people who actually know what this is, kind of disappointed in not being able to get the tractor fixed, probably should have pulled the entire engine apart and checked. Anyway, if you like this, or if you were just halfway entertained, or you learned what not to do, commenting apparently helps out a lot. So if you got something to say, please let me know. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel because you know, I'm gonna unveil that project. If you're coming from maybe a Corvette video, don't worry, there'll be more on the Corvette. It's not gone. You never know what else I'm gonna get into at this point. I appreciate you hanging out with me, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. I gotta, there, okay.